This video is going to focus on two very important concepts related to data analysis, attainment and progress. Before we speak about the criteria related to the data analysis, let's try to understand the main terminologies and definitions associated with those two aspects. Let's start with attainment. What does it mean? Attainment is a point in time measure that evaluates how well students perform against a given standard. When we talk about attainment, we have to understand that it is a one evaluation, one assessment, one measurement. We're not comparing. We do not have two different uh, information. We have only one. We're looking at it and we are trying to we're trying to determine what has a student achieved at this specific point in time. Usually, teachers, they measure attainment of their students throughout the academic year using different assessment types and schools, they set the criteria against which they determine the acceptance of the attainment of students. So some schools, they set the criteria of well above curriculum expectations, above curriculum expectations, in line with curriculum expectations, below or well below. Let's take an example that might make this concept clear. If a human being is trying to track his height at a specific age, so taking the stick, measuring his height will give him his attained height. So it's only one measurement, one specific point in time. What are the important definitions that we have to be mindful about when we analyze the attainment? We will start with the phrase stating authorized licensed curriculum. So when we want to present the data of the attainment, in relation to the authorized licensed curriculum standards, then we have to be careful about using the exams that are in line with the curriculum that the school has decided or been given the authority to deliver as a condition for it to operate. So an American school will have the Common Core State Standards as the authorized curriculum. For sciences, the next generation science standards. A British school will have the national curriculum. The other important definition is the external curriculum related assessments. What does that mean? It means the examinations for a specific curriculum that are taken at the end of the phase and are set and marked externally or are externally moderated. So these assessments give additional information to the school such as talking about SAT 1, 2, PSAT, or AP. Third, when we talk about internal curriculum-related assessments, then we're talking about examinations 
for a specific curriculum that are taken at the end of the unit, semester or school year, and that are marked internally by the school. We're talking here about summative assessments, either end of semester or end of year examinations. We have to be mindful about some specific criteria that should be highlighted upon when we talk about internal curriculum related assessments. Number one, validity. Number two, reliability. If the data that we have compiled and collected from our internal curriculum related assessments are not valid and reliable, then the analysis is not going to be taken into account when there is an external evaluator looking at the school data. So this is number one. Number two, also related to the internal curriculum related assessments, we have to make sure that when we present the internal data of the school, we are showing the alignment between the achieved curriculum and the intended curriculum. And this can only be done when we show the structure of the assessment where we have identified the standards, depth of knowledge when we selected each question in the assessment. The third point that we have to be mindful about is related to the moderation and marking. So validity and reliability was touched upon. We spoke about the alignment between the achieved and the intended through aligning the standards to the questions, taking into consideration the depth of knowledge. Now we have to come to the last part, which is about the marking and moderation. The scheme that was used across departments throughout the whole process of grading the papers, moderating the papers, entering the grades, then checking the, 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 the marks in order to have the final evaluation of the students. Consistency should be number one when we are talking about the marking and moderation. Now let's move to talk about progress. What is progress? Progress, it extends to which learners have progressed in their learning from their starting points and capabilities. Progress is about growth. Progress is about having two different checkpoints where we are trying to compare the first to the second. Where did it start and where are we now? Progress is based on two measurements. First, we talk about progress from starting point. So measured by how much growth, improvement in the attainment students make over time, typically from one year to the next, and typically against age-appropriate curriculum standards. Or we talk about progress towards measured individual potential. And this is very important for schools who have a number of students that have limited cognitive abilities. 
all educators globally, they aim to help students to achieve the best based on their cognitive abilities. But sometimes we have learners who have limited cognitive abilities. So in order to show that the school learning program is very competent and the learning opportunities are well designed, we have to look into the cognitive abilities of students compare it with the external curriculum related assessments and the internal curriculum related assessments to show that they are at curriculum expectations or only above because this is their ability. So two types two types of progress reports could be generated. First one is progress from starting point. Second one is compared against the individual potential. What are the important definitions that we need to keep in mind when we talk about progress? The first one, progress from starting point. Are we only aiming to improve students' content knowledge? Definitely not, because this is very low expectations. We are developing our learners holistically. We are trying to equip them with the needed 21st century skills. We want them to be globally competent. So we need to touch upon the changes in students' knowledge, skills, understanding, and ability measured against the starting point. Yes, it's kind of challenging when we talk about skills, but we have to find the right tools that will help us track and measure the progress. The second one, which is expected progress against curriculum standards. Expected progress against curriculum standards is considered that the student made expected progress if over this, the given period of time, they maintained or retained their level of attainment defined by the given curriculum standard or improved it. So a student who is B in grade six is expected to be B in grade seven. Let's look more into this. So measuring progress using assessment data. Students at least retain their level of attainment over a given period of time, which is usually one academic year, as measured by the school's assessment and defined by external set grade appropriate standards of the curriculum they follow. So if a student maintains the highest level of attainment available for the curriculum, for example, maintain A+, plus, it is considered that the student made better than expected progress. Before we end this presentation, let's touch base on some of the external benchmark assessments that are commonly used for American schools. We will start with the MAP assessment. What does it stand for? MAP is the acronym of Measures of Academic Progress. It is a standardized testing program from the USA. MAP assessments are tailored to an individual's current achievement level. It's very important to highlight on the fact that MAP is a computer-based dynamic assessment which, which is tailored to the individual needs. So for instance, after the first or second question, each student among a group of 20 students will be having his own 
version of the assessment based on his based on his performance in the previous uh, questions. The subject areas are reading, language, math, and science. Frequency, it is usually three times within an academic year. CAT4. CAT4 is the Cognitive Abilities Test, and it is provided by GL Education of Reasoning Ability, not Curriculum Content. It has four areas. Verbal reasoning, thinking with words, nonverbal reasoning, thinking with shapes, quantitative reasoning, thinking with numbers, spatial reasoning, which is thinking with shapes, and space and frequency. Usually it is done once every two to three years. When talking about CAT4, we have to keep in mind three very important notations. Number one, destinine, which is the student score on a scale of one to nine. One is the low, nine is the high, and it offers a broad overview of the student's performance. The second notation is standard age score, which is the SAS. It is the most important piece of information derived from CAT4, and it is based on the student's row score, which has been adjusted for age and placed on a scale that makes a comparison with a nationality representative sample of students of the same age. So the SAS is key to benchmarking and tracking progress and is the fairest way to compare the performance of different students within a year group or across year groups. And the third one, which is looking into the the verbal surface or verbal deficit. It's very important to compare the verbal SAS with the non-verbal SAS. If we subtract the verbal SAS minus the non-verbal SAS, we will have an integer. If this integer is positive, then we have verbal surface. If it is negative, then we have verbal deficit. Whoever is talking about data analysis must mention those in order to show how CAT4 is used to guide the school about cognitive abilities and verbal deficit. Moving forward, we have the IBT which stands for International Benchmark Test. This is an internationally administered program of assessments, which benchmarks students' performance against a broad international cohort students. And it is offered for English, math, science, and Arabic disciplines, administered once every academic year. 